O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. That his mercy endureth forever. It is in the mercy of the Lord that we have our hope. In his righteousness we face God's holy wrath. In his mercy we behold the face of Jesus Christ. Israel, the Old Testament people of God, saw God's mercy. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Time and time again, God's people rebelled against him. They rejected his prophets, they disregarded his word. Yet God did not deal with them after their sin. He dealt with them according to his mercy. The promise of God's mercy is not only extended to the children of Abraham, but to all those who fear his name. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. That his mercy endureth forever. Good evening. My name is Larry K. Hall. I've been here a little over a year. I think I started here in September the 23rd of last year. I can't remember in uh, January of this year. I thank God for my salvation. I was saved when I was 16 years old. Something like a uh, youth ministry at Baptist Bible Church. Pastor Tom Wallace was the pastor. Uh, Brother uh, Hall and his wife Phoebe drove our bus route, and uh, we also drove for the teenagers going to different outings. Uh, one New Year's Eve night, I guess by 62, they took us to uh, First Baptist Church in Newcastle. Some of you people know that church. Uh, they had a uh, watch night service. I come to know the Lord Jesus Christ that night and uh, was saved. I didn't live for the Lord, so he had to spike me a little bit after that. Car accident when I was uh, 17. Broke my neck from the first to the fourth vertebrae. It was like in an S. I had my hair blonde. I was running up in Jay Hatfield's area at that time, <laughs> a place called Countdown. Ornery, not living for the Lord, so he's uh, going to correct me. I had that car accident. First time I knocked out my life. Uh, I came to, I stand and looking at my car. One guy with me, he was knocked out of my car. Another guy, he walked back home. I was hard as nails, I thought it was, and uh, my neck was hurting me quite a bit, but I just shrugged it off. My sister took me to Elkton Hospital after the police got done with me and uh, laid me down in the emergency room in Elkton Hospital and uh, laid me flat on my back and he said, uh, what are you hurt at? I said, my neck. He started at my big toe, set me up three times, took my last five dollars, gave me a pain pill, sent me home. That night, next night, I couldn't even get out of bed. Not as I rolled, I fell on my knees and got up where my mother came in my bedroom and lifted my head up off the pillow so I could stand up. Sunday night, I went to my family doctor in Oxford. Monday, I went to Jennersville Hospital and uh, took x-rays in my neck. I had a Marine doctor there. I come out of the room after he said, where's the guy at his x-ray? I was walking him down the hall. They took me to a room and Drilled some holes in my head, put 12 pounds of weight on my neck, binky tongs, and for 12 weeks I laid flat on my back. Had a brace on me, turned me loose. That was the beginning of God turning, changing my life around to serve him. After that, I got, uh, met a young lady, my next door neighbor down the road, Linda Goodchild was her name. She's now Larry, uh, Linda K. Hall. And uh, took her to a watch night service, service at Baptist Bible Church and she was 18 prior to our wedding. She accepted Christ, baptized in the church, married in the church, and lived for Jesus, tried to for 40 years plus. That's the Bible Church. Till time that God says, it's time to leave, Larry. You're not doing enough here. And I came over here at a uh, revival service, seeing God's hand working, seeing God's blessing, and see God use me here in this ministry. And I praise the Lord for that. I thank uh, the people here at this church for the willingness to serve Christ, and I look forward to serving you here till I go to be with Jesus, or Jesus comes, and I think he's gonna come before I go. Thank you very much. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. How often have our souls found relief in the deliverance of the Lord? 
God delivers us not only from the snare of death and hell, but he hears our prayer and delivers us in the midst of our gravest distresses. How often has your soul found relief in the deliverance of the Lord? Give thanks to the Lord. Even in the midst of these trials, we are given a secure foundation upon the rock of Jesus Christ. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I, I will, will not, not fear. fear. What can man do unto me? Jesus told us not to fear those who have the power to kill our bodies. Instead, we are to fear him who, after he has killed the body, has power to destroy the soul. But consider this. The same God who has power to destroy our soul has given himself as a ransom for our soul. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will never cast me out. We are no longer enemies of God, but are made to be sons of God. The sons and daughters of God. The, the sons and daughters of God. God. These are just a couple of uh, things that I'm very thankful for. For God sending a man named George Whaley to our house, inviting us to church. And that was First Baptist Church, too. <laughs> Also for God sending me, my beautiful wife, whom I love and adore. She's my backbone and inspiration. I'm thankful for my children, my parents, and knowing they are saved also, and, uh, and how we can have spiritual conversations together. I'm also thankful for my mother and father-in-law, and man, can they make a mean apple pie. <laughs> I'm thankful for my brothers and family, and I'm also very nervous now. <laughs> And for my Aunt Pat, who was truly a godly woman, she's a very spiritual woman. She, I'm thankful for all my brothers and sisters in Christ in this godly church, for our faithful preachers and teachers and their families, and for our preachers staying true to King James Version, Amen. and for our missionaries who sacrificed so much for Jesus, for our deacons, for Jack Miller and his wife, what a godly example they are for all of us. I thank God for my health and my abilities and how he has used me and how he is going to use me down the road for his purpose. I'm thankful for our war veterans for freedom and some gave their lives for it. I'm thankful for what we, that we can gather together as a body of believers and worship in the true and living God. I'm just thankful for Jesus, who saved me as a young teenager from an eternal hell to eternity with Jesus forever. Amen. He forever lives in my heart. And although I stumble, he always picks me up. He's always, say, he always is there to talk to. What a great listener he is. What a great joy it is to be a Christian. There's no other life that can compare to it. One day soon, I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs> the one who created it all. Now that's something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than, than to, to put, put confidence, confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than, than to, to put, put confidence in, in princes. princes. It is better to trust in the Lord. How often have we placed our trust in people and things instead of placing our trust in the Lord? Our trust is misplaced in our wealth or strength or intellect. It is better to trust in the Lord. When the trials of life come, where do you turn? When friends forsake you, where do you turn? When foes attack you, where do you turn? Where, where do, do you turn? turn? It is better to trust in the Lord. God promises even to help them that help you. The psalmist writes, All nations compassed me about, but in the name of the Lord will I destroy them. They compassed me about, yea, they compassed me about. But, but in the, the name, name of the, of the Lord, Lord, I will, will destroy, destroy them. them. They've compassed me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in, For in the, the name, name of the Lord, Lord I will destroy, destroy them. them. The destruction of the psalmist enemies was not for personal gain or out of a fit of vengeance. God destroys your enemies for the name of the Lord. God will fight for his name's sake. And so, too, should those who are called by that worthy name. 
The Lord owns a name that is above every name. At that name, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the the glory glory of God the the Father. Um, For those who don't know me, I'm Joshua French. And um, one of the main things I'm thankful for is my early salvation. And uh, that's mostly due um, to the children's workers sticking to the Word of God and telling us young people about God's Word and His salvation. Um, The other major thing I'm thankful for is for this church and for Pastor Valiente um, and the time that he has spent with me and um, that he's shown me what, what is best for my life and that through the Word of God. And um, also for my youth group, for it being a place where I can practice um, my a ministry for for to use in later life. Um, also, I'm very thankful for the examples in our youth group. Um, that it's been a rebu- rebuke to me sometimes of how how much of an example a teenager can be to another teenager. Um, I'm also very thankful for this ministry and just um, looking forward to see how God can use me in the future. Amen. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord help me. But the Lord helps me. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. How have you seen the Lord help you? Was it in your finances, your marriage, your job? We can all echo the psalmist praise. In the midst of my great struggle, the Lord help me. How shall we render thanks unto the Lord for his deliverance, for his help? Certainly with the prayer of praise, but how else? We declare and testify of his power among fellow believers. And among the lost. We use the areas God has strengthened us to help strengthen others. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. My name is Joe Padone. I'm your newest member, voted in Sunday. And I just want to give you a little background on myself. I was raised a Catholic not a good thing I know that now but I went to Catholic school and when I got into eighth grade and got out of Catholic school I never went back to church kind of went off on my own after high school I went into service because I couldn't get a job spent three years in the army two tours in Vietnam wounded six months in hospital for some reason the Lord kept me he ordained my destiny down the road I know that now and uh, ended up getting a Purple Heart, Bronze Star, Army accommodation, and he moves me along, and I meet, I become a fireman, believe it or not. <laughs> so now I know what hell feels like, because I've been in a few hot spots. But I go in there, and I meet my wife through a friend, and she is saved. She gets me going to First Baptist Church under uh, Jack Hiles. So now I'm starting to hear this stuff, and I'm going, wait a minute, this is uh, completely different, because I never had a Bible. Catholic Church doesn't use a Bible. The priest tells you what they want you to. So I'm sitting there saying, you know, this is pretty good. I'm using Patty's Bible. I'm going, you know, this has got some stuff I need to know about. And through Patty and my mother and father-in-law, which were both saved, continually praying for me, and me and Patty had our difference. I was still under this baptism. I was baptized as a baby. I don't see why you would have to. But the Holy Spirit used that to get me saved. So on May 14th, 1978, I accepted the Lord. It's the greatest day of my life. Uh, since then, we been in several different churches because we had moved and then we had fallen off for quite a while here and Pastor Valente and his teens came and dropped some tracts off at our door which led us here 
which is a special thing because ever since we got here, I felt at home since the first day we walked in the door. There's some wonderful people here. My row right here is some of my special people. <laughs> first time I walked in here and I had to pay for sitting in that row, but that's all right. <laughs> but I love the church and the people here. And I know we're going to grow. And one thing I forgot, when I got saved, immediately I wanted to be baptized. There was no thing. Scales fell off my eyes. I knew what I wanted. I was in a deep Bible study. And I set up my baptism. Well, when I got baptized, remember, none of my family saved. So my pastor was Pastor El Turco, another Italian. Same background. I said, you got to do a nice message because I'm bringing them all in. I put them right in the front row. <laughs> and they had to hear, but they got to watch me get baptized the correct way. And uh, this uh, Friday, I'll be going down to visit my mom. She's uh, on dialysis, has to have oxygen all the time. She still hasn't accepted, but one more time, I'm going to work on her. So hopefully, Amen. you know, and like I said, Lord's did so many miracles in my life. As Larry said, if I... <laughs> I have a feeling he's going to come get me before I pass away. I just been reading about that today, and it's. Uh, I was teasing him before I came up here. I'm going to get out of here real quick, but I was teasing him. I said, when all the lights go down and they turn this one on, I'm going to say, I don't know about the rest of you, but I see the white light. He's coming for me. Thank you. Amen. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The Lord has done whatsoever he pleases. And whatsoever he does is good. As the psalmist speaks of God's right hand, he speaks of his power and authority. It is the power of the Creator who made all things by the power of his word. It is the power of the sustainer who upholds up things, all things by the power of his word. We behold God's valiant works in the world that surrounds us. We most fully realize his goodness and power in the word preserved for us. And we daily see the outworking of God's works in our lives. There remains not a part of our lives untouched by the powerful working of God. Our God is not a God afar off. But rather he is nigh unto us. God is intimately aware of every detail of our lives. He knows our down sitting and our uprising. He knows our thoughts are far off before we ever think them. Have you seen the powerful right hand of the Lord working valiantly in your life? Then, then let, let us, us offer, offer to him the, him the thanksgiving, thanksgiving of praise. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has chastened me sore, but he hath given me not over unto death. To what purpose was the psalmist chastened, and yet not delivered over to death? It is for the same reason we as believers today face God's discipline. To bring us to repentance. Repentance. repentance that we might, just as the psalmist, declare the works of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will go into them, and I will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord, into which the righteous shall enter. Open to me the gates. We will go through those gates and praise the Lord. But until then, in the land of the living, let us all declare the works of the Lord. It's a real privilege to be here this evening and to look out and see all these souls looking up here toward me. I mean, that's what you are, you know. Each one of you have a soul, and, and that's what the Lord is all about, making sure that's safe that in, in his hands at the right time. I want to tell you it is a great privilege to, to be able to, to be here to discuss the Lord a little bit with you, to give you a few words of testimony. My name is Lillerton Powell. My wife's name is Lucille, and we both are in our 80s. 
with me being a little advanced more than her. I thought I'd better say that for safety reasons. <laughs> but we do praise our Lord and thank him several times every day for all our many, many blessings. Blessings too numerous to even try to comprehend. Blessings of, of uh, you, you just can't begin to name them. You, you have uh, blessings of your chur our church. You know, I was thinking just this morning, looking over these notes, that our church is a, is a witness in our bulletin we put out every week. Everything you see in that bulletin is something to be thankful for and a real blessing for the community and for the body of believers here known as Lighthouse Baptist Church. Everything in the bulletin. You look at it tonight if you get a chance. And look, every item listed under the headlines is a real blessing to be thankful for. And we just, we just have so many things to be thankful for at this time of year and, all, and at all times. We should tr treat every day as a Thanksgiving day. I've, I've been through many things during my lifetime. But I, I've never, never been far from the Lord. Thank the Lord for that. I was uh, baptized when I was 12 years old. And that was in 1937, in case any of you can think back that far. <laughs> I, was, I was brought to, to, to the Lord or to the church through a, an A&P store manager that decided that there was five of us children out on the farm there, and he found it out, and he thought he'd better come and, and see what was going on, and he did. And he picked up us five children every Sunday morning, and if we didn't, were, were not ready, then we had mother to, to <laughs> deal with and, and father too. But I, I just thank the Lord for that, for, for someone that was interested in me when I was a young guy, a young boy. and. Uh, there are, there are many, many other things. We uh, accepted Christ as my Savior when I was 12, like I said. Graduated from high school in 1943. Entered right into the U.S. Naval Air Corps and served during World War II for, over, for about three years, trying to eliminate German subs most of the time in the Atlantic, uh, North Atlantic. Now, I went to... I want the young people to especially hear this. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Savior this evening, please don't put it off. Please get him with you. Have him as your partner. I mean, to go with you always. In all the times and all the troubles of my lifetime, I've never <laughs> felt alone. I've, I've always had the company of a, a, a person with me, and I know it was the Lord. I mean, he was real so many times. I was in danger a lot of times in service, and, and just, I just had a calm about me, knowing that the Lord was with me, and who could be against me, really? You know, I just, just, uh, I just, I've just believed that all my life. I've had to. And I want the young people to know that there'll be hard times and tough times in your life, probably. You'll have ups and downs in your, in your education, Take it to the Lord, I mean, prayer every day. Think of him. Give him, ask him for his guidance each day as you get up and, and look, for, look for the answers that the Lord wants you to have. Uh, don't, don't put it off. Just don't put it off. <coughs> get your young life off to a great start. Get the guidance and direction and salvation of Jesus Christ in your life now. I mean, now, you know. If you do not know him this evening, make it, make it, the, 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 make it a point to get that settled before <coughs> this season of the year is over. And now uh, I feel young men, young men and women of today have so much temptation and peer pressure come straight at them from hell, speak, to speak that way, that you, ju you just need more than ever to, to be close to Christ. Get close to Christ. Have, have a partner. Have a solid partner with you. Solid in the fact that you know he's there, though, and can always be with you. And also for the, for the young, young and older, be careful during the holiday season. Watch the office parties you may find yourself in with so much alcohol and drugs around these days. 
Yes, there's a lot of counterfeiting going on these days, but people, the Lord Jesus Christ is no counterfeit. Amen. He was promised in the Old Testament, the Testament before his birth. He was born of a virgin as promised also. He lived a real, as a real man. He was crucified and shed his blood for you and I. He predicted his own death and resurrection. It happened as he promised. He is real. Believe it tonight. Amen. All you've heard here this evening has just pointed to Christ and to how real he really is. And you know, he promised all those things. What else did he promise? He said he would return. <coughs> he will return, and you can bet on it. Amen. We need to know the real Christ these days, understand who he is, and share him with others. Let him, let, uh, let's thank him this Thanksgiving Day for all we have and ever hope to have, and then celebrate his birthday this Christmas as a real Christmas and as a real as a real season for all the celebrating. Thank you. Amen. Getting pushed over to this mic. There are two themes that you heard, the folks giving testimony. You have one, that the Lord is going to return. Now, that's not often a Thanksgiving kind of idea. But one of these days, we are promised in the word of God that he will come. And my question to you is, are you ready? Are you ready? That is not a hoping kind of question. It's a knowledge kind of question. The second thing that the people mentioned most of all was that they were thankful for Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. I would be foolish not to tell all of you that are here. We have some visitors and a lot, of, a lot of home folk. In very simplest terms, that we have all sinned against the Lord God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means we came short of what he, what he is. He is perfect in all character and all ways he is holy. But God had mercy on us. And the biggest thing about Thanksgiving that we can be thankful for is that he took pity on us and provided us a way to be forgiven of our sin through what Jesus did on the cross for you. He really came. He was really in that manger. He really died on that cross. He really rose again three days later, and he did it all in place of you for your sin. There's a lot of things that I appreciate, appreciate that, that God has given me, but the greatest of all is forgiveness through Jesus Christ because I know that I'll forever live with most of you, those of you who know Jesus Christ, and I'll forever live with God face to face. Dr. Bob Jones Sr. said, when gratitude dies on the altar of a man's heart, that man is well nigh hopeless. Gratitude cannot be taught. Thankfulness cannot be taught by wonderful sermons or outlines or points. It's something that you must experience by opening your eyes and seeing what great things the Lord has done for your soul, for you, for your life, for your family. And because it can't be taught, I thought that I would leave you tonight with just a little bit of a shock value and ask you for just a moment to consider if God took all those things away. So in the quietness of this last few moments, just a few days before you celebrate Thanksgiving, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you did not have a family. What would you go home to tonight? What would it be like if you did not have a church? What would it be like if you did not have a Bible? What would it be like if you did not have parents? What would it be like if you had no home? If tonight you were truly homeless, as many are in Wilmington. 
I'd like to ask you, what would it be like if you had no friends? Really. You really had no one who cared for you. What would it be like this Thanksgiving for those of you who are married if you had no husband or if you had no wife? Parents, what would it be like if you had no children? When I was writing some of these things down this week, I was on my recliner and I was hearing my two boys who were carrying on upstairs. And they were laughing and, don't do that, don't do that. And I imagined for a moment what it would be like for silence to be in our home. What if you had no children, parents? What if you had no America? And what if you had no Savior? Where would you be? Sometimes we need to shock ourselves into realizing what we have to be thankful for Amen. and open our eyes and not by any teaching that anyone can do but by observation and experience, really appreciating all we have. The Bible says in James 1.17 that every good, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, from the Father of lights. I like this time of year because all the lights, well, the Father of lights, all that is majestic, all that is good, and with him is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Do you know there will never be a time when your Father doesn't delight in giving you good gifts? Amen. And I know a little bit about that tonight. Because a couple of weeks ago, we found out that we'll be having our fifth child. And what a wonderful time to share it with my church family. Thanksgiving. Don't tell Amy's parents. They won't know till tomorrow. <laughs> our family would like to come at this time and sing a song that we sing around our house and in the car quite a bit. Do we have this mic too? All of you? Okay. More? <clears throat> Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for 